Cold case. <laughs> What up players and pimps, wing and wingettes, welcome to Camel's Creation, um, of course you're always working on something, so today we're going to have to figure out how to change the radiator in GTO, um, I heard my belts kind of squeaking a little bit, so I came to look, because they're new belts, so I thought maybe something got on it, I noticed, if you look here, looks like we have a radiator leak, uh, it was spraying all across here, spraying it on my battery, Sprayed up on the fuse box. So uh, I ran a pressure test from AutoZone, which is here. You can rent it for like 250 and you get the money back when you take the part back. Um, so first up is going to be, I'm gonna remove this uh, so I can see the radiator. Uh, you have a stock intake, it probably routes this way, but you probably still have a cover covering the radiator that you still have to remove. So I don't know how that comes off because I don't have one. I'm sure just some push pins or clips, but I remove all this so I can get a good breeder radiator and uh, get that pressure tester and hook it here. So I tried a couple caps, they didn't work, so I'm using universal fitting. So basically you put it in here, you pressurize it, and if it loses pressure, you got a leak. And you can try to find out uh, where the fluid leaks from once it's pressurized. So let me get this stuff off, hook it up, and I'll show you how to use it. And then I can see what radiator I want to purchase. I got the pressure tester hooked up and uh, none of the caps fit so I had to use the universal one which is this uh, the way these work make sure these grooves are touching first find one that fits sticks it in and then you rotate these caps separately until it meets the other side and that expands this rubber part to create a seal your cap will tell you the max pressure so it's kind of hard to see on this one I saw it somewhere uh, it's there, but it's all dirty, but um, 18 pounds is what it is. You also got this gauge here that goes up to 20 in the green, 20 pounds in the green. Uh, so that's kind of the max you want to go. But we're going to pump it and you should see where the pressure and the coolant comes from. Starting to build some pressure. You can see it spraying in there. It's kind of faint. You can hear it and see it. And also now I got this cover off. You look there. You see the coolant coming out. So it's cracked here. So we're gonna need a new radiator. And uh I got this new one, this old one out, get the new one in and show you all the steps. Alright guys, I'll put a little more cool in there so you can see it a little bit better squirt. One pump and it's already coming out. So, yeah, she's broken. I mean, it has to be at this crack, obviously. I just don't know how that crack happened. But, time for the radiator. I guess I may go cold case if I got enough money. We'll see. Alright, now I'm about to pull the radiator out. So, first you want to drain your radiator so peacock on the right side the driver's side the bottom is white untwist that make sure you take your top off to help it bleed out easier then we get your fan out so unplug this fan harness here and you'll have uh this clip to push back and this clip to push back push those clips back pull your fan up at the bottom it just rest on um some feet down there you can kind of see it they don't clip in, so it pulls straight up. And then you're gonna wanna unbolt your radiator from your, uh, I'm sorry, your condenser from your radiator. So you got a bolt here, a bolt here, and some bolts at the bottom. So you can reach down in here and get it, or you can take the plastic from underneath the car and do it. These are gonna be uh, eight mil bolts. Once that, once that's unbolted from your radiator, pull the radiator straight up. Uh, also, don't forget, you gotta undo the hoses so these two hoses this big hose down there 
and then uh, this one. So I got a couple pans under the car to catch all of that. Alright, so I have ready to drink, the coolant the reservoir hose is off, uh, fan is out of course, I pulled the hose off of here, that is now here, uh, for this one I took the, took the clip off, but it's hard to pull it off of there, so I just pulled it off up here, and I'll probably put the hose on the new one, so that uh, I don't have to reach on there and do it. But now for this condenser, I was going to take these bolts out. I actually took them out, but I can't really get my own to do the bottom ones. I don't feel like, um, can't really see them. I don't feel like taking the undercarriage off. So it has these same clips that like the fan does. So I just unclipped it uh, from the radiator and try to pull it out that way. And then just clip it back in. Um, it's just like the fan has these little feet that it, it rests in these slots. So I'll unhook this. Hope I can pull it straight up. But if not, I may have to get under the car and get those bolts out. But we'll see. Oh, I almost forgot. These have to come out. So all you do is get your screwdriver in there, your flathead, in between and lift or push and lift and then you can kind of be careful these things are hard to come by apparently but once you kind of get it pushed out uh that one snapped right out but this one wants to give a little trouble So you need these because you don't have the new one with the new radiator. And I believe these are hard to come by. I don't know. But yeah. Got it ready out. It's seen better days. So I believe it was leaking from here. That stress relief crack, but I dented it there and I pulled the motor. And it looks like that stress relief crack was working its way loose. So it's seen better days. Uh, now you want to transfer all your stuff from your old ones, all your this rubber donut that slides right off and just goes here. Um, same with the rubber garment boots on the bottom those transfer to the bottom go ahead and transfer this hose over here looks like we got a new cap already to the cap off of here and here so you could uh you know attach your hoses and i believe these two for automatics uh, i don't have to do anything to that because they're here too on the old one and i screw this off um it's it's literally just a a nut so I don't I don't think anything happens here for me. Uh I don't know if it leaks. And I suppose it did something. I'll let y'all know. We have to transfer all this stuff. Like I said, the condenser, it has these same hooks, these same um clips like the radiator fan. So instead of taking those bolts out, I just unhooked it from there and had to keep wiggling it out and wiggling it to get it in front of here so I can pull the radiator up. But either way it worked. But I might have to. Oh no, okay. I thought I had to transfer the clips over. But no, never mind. But yeah, I'm gonna transfer all this stuff over and slide in.
refrigerator I got in. Actually came went in it either than it came out. Um so I just put that condenser back in there. Uh, I didn't take those bolts out. So they're in the feet right there. Got my hoses hooked back up. Um leaving these plugged. I said I hope they're okay. I think they're for automatic cars. Got this hose in here. So I do is set my fan on these feet, plug it back up, and uh, we're gonna get to the bleeding process and also put your two hoses back here. in um got all the hooks in place fan is there plug your fan up make sure you close your peacock at the bottom uh so it don't leave back out i yeah, put that on there make sure you have no obstructions hitting your belts from your fan and everything and then uh the fan was a little snug on this cold case and i had to kind of force it in there it was a little tight but i got in there so I want to bleed. So I wasn't quite sure about those uh, those caps. I mean, they're for the automatic transmission, I believe. But I don't know. I just thought something would be there, so I wanted to pressure test it just to make sure everything was connected. All my holes are good. I don't have any other leaks. So basically, use that same tool, pump it to almost 18, let it sit for about five minutes, and make sure it maintains pressure, which it did. So we're good. So release the pressure. And we could um, take this off and we'll start the filling process. So basically, some people jack the car up just to keep the air travel to the front, but it's not always necessary. So I'm putting everything back together now that I pressure tested it and do the fill up. All right, for this kit, you got a whole bunch of stuff. Um, basically, all you need is a adapted to fix your radiator. So for GTO, it's this bigger one. Uh, I'm just going to use this straight piece. I don't really need any of these extender things. So um, this end is gonna go on here. And then that will screw down. This goes in your cap and it will seal um, seal to the radiator. goes in here that seal goes down that goes over it make sure you line your things up press down and screw that on push some straight move with one hand but press that down screw that on and then you'll put this on top of here and screw that down and you have a open and close valve. So I'm gonna fill it up until it kind of holds some fluid and then um, start up, let it burp. One, another note I want to mention, uh, tip for buying radiator fluid, at least when you're doing a whole exchange like this, is to buy the concentrate. So of course you use uh, debt's cool for GM vehicles but if you buy this concentrate, this is I believe like $25.
Uh, so it's concentrated, so you have to add water. If you buy pre-diluted, it's like $18. But basically you get twice as much for 25. So if you're 18, I spent a dollar a piece on distilled water. So now I got two gallons worth of coolant technically for $26, $27 versus one gallon of pre-diluted for 18. Yeah, I'm gonna hook all that up and then pour it up. All right, guys, sorry for the belt squeak, but basically you want to uh, run your car until it reaches operating temperature and then turn your heat on, default, full blast, and just let it run. You'll see it bubble out. Uh, a lot of small bubbles are uh, the air coming out. So once you turn your heat on, it can flow through your uh, heater cord and all that stuff. So once it's run, so you don't see any more bubbles. And it's just level up the tank anymore. Lock it off. You can put your exit back in your bottle. And then turn your car off, let it cool. And then fill your reservoir to your maximum. And we'll be done. Alright, thanks for watching.